And I wish that I had that choice for my kitchen cabinets because I would have done something like that. But at that point, the builder already had everything. So we got the white. But the white kitchen, uh, I've heard, is going out, right? There was this big article of like, I just got this huge I thought white, it was kitchen. In. white kitchen with white, you know, quartz. And it's beautiful and it's clean. But uh, that, that apparently is going out. So there you have it. To white, me. <laughs> white kitchens are out. Sean buys a new house and white kitchens Whatever are out. Whatever I buy, it goes out. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Sean and Matt Show. My name is Matt, that is Sean, and welcome to our show, Sean, Thursday, December 17th. You know, I ordered um, Chinese food the other day, and my girlfriend got hot and sour soup. Oh, yeah. You're, uh, oh, I'm a fan. Yeah. So what is in hot and sour soup? It's like this, <laughs> to be honest, I don't know, but it's like this this weird consistency soup, right, with like little, like... I, I, you know what? I couldn't tell you one vegetable that's in that, except tofu. There is if, some tofu in If that. I'm having soup, I don't want it to be spicy, <laughs> and I don't want it to be sour. And when you look on the menu, there's no, like, okay, this is the name of it, and then this is what's in it. Yeah. And then I asked my girlfriend what it is, and she lists out eight ingredients. How does she know that? I have no Who idea. Who knows what's in hot and sour soup? It's a ridiculous name. And it needs a description. Well, you know, the funny thing is my daughter always gets egg drop soup. And I'm like, dude, that looks disgusting. And it's like, you know, this like what one other soup. But after we get off this topic, uh, what is it? Tom Yum soup, right? My my wife gets Tom Yum soup. Honestly, can I, I mean, it it smells like vomit. Like, <laughs> I'm like, like hot vomit. I, it's yeah. bad, but like it really does. Get some Tom Yum soup and then tell me if I'm wrong. I go with things Anyways. that I know, like chicken and broccoli is money. Chicken and broccoli is always good. Wonton soup is always good. Um, chicken lo mein. I mean, come on. How can you go wrong? We're probably going to order out tonight. Yeah, I'm starving. It, it, might be, uh, it might be Chinese. I'll <laughs> let you know if, we, uh, if she gets the hot and sour soup. Guys, so in today's video, um, this might be the last video that we do of 2020. We are going to do the 10 design trends that will be everywhere in 2021 and beyond. Obviously, a lot has happened in 2020 that has maybe made people rethink their housing needs and what they actually want in their house. And you just yeah. bought a, a new house, so I'm going to ask you some of these questions. I here. did, and yeah, I'm, I'm rethinking of what I want to do exactly. So go ahead. Yeah, let's start it up. Number one is perhaps the most obvious dedicated home offices and... I feel like before 2020, people who had, you know, the luck, I'm not talking about like two bedroom condos where it's like one, you know, bedroom is maybe partly an office, but like people who have a house with more than three rooms, I feel like they would have an office space, but I feel like it was just an office space in name. And it wasn't like, hey, let me go in on a Saturday morning and send out an email or two. It wasn't like, a, okay, I'm here nine to five. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, that has definitely changed and will continue to change. And, you know, it could change back too. But I think that dedicated office spaces are a huge trend. I have a dedicated office space in my house. Um, it's kind of a shared one between my wife and I. She has her little area. We're going to end up redoing it once we gets settled in and you know create the real office space with the right furniture but i mean you have to you have to because most people are working from home two three days a week if not right now the entire time so you and your wife um work in the same office we don't because she doesn't work she works so she's office. in the same room as you she well what she does is our, our filing so like she'll file my files she gets all that stuff together um Keeps our bills in order, that kind of stuff, yeah. in her desk, uh, which used to be my desk, but I don't use it anymore and whatever. So now I have a side one, but sooner or later, we're going to pull this this all in. So I have that office, but then I have the studio upstairs. And so I have another desk. And honestly, I like working up there because when I'm up there, I'm secluded. I'm away from everybody else, and I feel like I can get so much more done. That is a awesome office space yeah. up there. Yeah. Number two is a clearly delineated, uh, clearly delineated spaces. So mm. everyone loves the open floor plans. You know, millennials knock down every single wall. New construction homes, you know, you walk through the middle of it, and then everything else is open. 
Um, but now we're starting to see a um, maybe not a reverse trend, but certainly a trend to um, have some sort of separations, whether it's uh, Zoom calls, whether it's work meetings, whether it's um, e-learning, some sort of um, separation of space, wall dividers, Soji doors, things of that nature. Yeah, where, where I could see this is maybe in the condo market. Uh, somebody needs, you know, they have one big space and they need some division, so they'll put up those little, um, you know, whatever they're called. The yeah, room, divi di yeah, room, room dividers. Room dividers yeah. Or, yeah. Uh, so I think that's, but I don't think it's going to go to the trend of we're going to go to boxy rooms anymore. You know, like 1960s homes when you have, here's the kitchen. And yeah. here's the, you know, I, I hope to, I hope it does not. Go My out. condo has a door frame in the kitchen where a door used to be where you could close off the entire kitchen. You know, I don't think it's going to reverse that much, but maybe, um, you know, more pocket doors or more flexible doors like yeah, that. Yeah, like the barn doors or yeah. something like that yeah. where you, and I've seen some really cool ideas with big barn doors where you, you know, it's hidden in one spot and then it closes up this whole big area and it just makes it a really unique space. So, yeah, I think that that could work. Number three is house plants and indoor gardens. Sean, you just got a plant, didn't you? You're talking my ear off about it. <laughs> so we didn't just get this plant. We have had this plant for a long time. It was this little pine tree kind of thing. I don't know what kind of pine, but it's like this. It's a cool little plant. Right. So we've had this thing for so long and it was in this this little and my wife is a plant killer. Uh, so I'm like, <laughs> we just don't pay attention. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but she has been good about it lately. And we, it was in this small pot and she transitioned after having it honestly for like 12 to 15 years. Like we've had that thing forever. She transitioned it to a bigger pot and that thing has grown. Like it was this high. Now it is, I want to say like six and a half feet high. Wow. And so the thing has taken over and we don't know where to put it. Right. so it's like, it's heavy now. It's hard to move. And where do you put a six, six and a half foot plant? No but, idea. Um, yeah, I think, um, you know, bringing the outdoors in, the indoors out, that's going to be the whole thing. There's something about having something living, like, in your property. Yeah, you it know? just gives it a, um, you know, a good feeling. Just life. Right, yeah, give it some life. Um, I saw this one listing in Michigan. If I can find it, I'll pull it up. But basically, someone's living room was essentially like an atrium where there had to have been 75 plants, a waterfall. Like they had overdone it to the extreme, but it, it looked like you were walking through a jungle. Almost. Yes. I mean, it can be cool. It can be overwhelming. Yeah. Too, that sometimes. one was. So don't go crazy, guys. That one was definitely overwhelming. Sean, you might have to help me on number four. Number four is Rattan Accents. R-A-T-T-A-N. <laughs> should, I, should I know what this word means? I, I, I was going to say that right. I have no idea. I, I was going to say that. You sent me this article earlier, and I was like, I'm just going to be like, listen, I'm from Pittsburgh. I went to a state school. They didn't teach us Did what R-A-T-T-O-N means because yeah. I have zero idea. So let me tell you um, what it means. In line with the houseplant trend, natural materials are having a huge moment in particular rattan is the material du jour i mean this article might maybe as well be raton. in another language maybe it's raton it's gotta be du jour raton. it's gotta be i am just butchering uh, so i would say like this. driftwood or something like that yeah maybe? yeah yeah that's pretty cool i could see that is shiplap raton accents mm, was it natural though I well, I guess you know it was natural. No at one idea. Point it becomes shiplaps. Yeah, I mean, um, you're not hiring hey, me not? to know the difference between <laughs> a shiplap and raton. You're hiring me to win the property that you have multiple options. Yeah, exactly. Options on. Well, I think you know the the one trend was barnwood, right? Recycled barnwood. Yeah. Very cool trend. Uh, it's made in tables and all this stuff. There's a there's a place up in Alexandria that does a lot of um, recycled furniture, and they have some really cool stuff. Can we um, move on from this? Sure. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, number five, wood grain kitchen cabinets and counters. So think uh, butcher block. Think kitchen island. You know, maybe you have the quartz countertops and then a wood butcher block island. I like the look. It kind of reminds me of country farmhouse. I think it's a good look. What do yeah, you think? Yeah, it's very cool. Uh, I wouldn't do the whole thing like that. I would do an accent with it. And actually, my brother's redoing his house. He's, uh, he's taking his old cabinets. He found... His house was like 1940s or something. It still had the original metal cabinets in it. So what he's doing is taking all of the paint off, and he's going to reuse those metal cabinets, but then put a quartz counter over top of it. So like pull that modern with the old in, and then a portion of it will be that butcher block. We, I was going to say we sold a house a few years ago, awesome place over on Quebec in New North Arlington, and they put this huge butcher block. I mean, it was... It was probably three or four inches At thick. At least, yeah. And he said he spent thousands of dollars on that, yeah. that 
island. Like it's may, awesome. Maybe like four thousand dollars. I'll I'll put a picture up if you're watching on YouTube. Yeah. Um, I think it's a good look because if you're doing new construction, you have the budget, you know, have some sort of contemporary flair to it, and I, I think that does it. Yeah, and I don't know about the wood cabinets. I'm still warming up to that. I feel like it's still colorful cabinets at this point, like you, your blues and grays and things like that. Are you, blues are big. Blues are huge. What about two-tone? Two-tone. Blue and white, white and blue. We did a house this year uh, in Lake Barcroft. They had white up top, and they had a gray in the bottom. It or really how good. about um, some blue cabinets with uh, some gold accent, gold, gold accents. hardware? I'm telling you what, the gold accents are coming back i just bought this cabinet for one of my bathrooms it's blue with gold it looks awesome i love it and i wish that i had that choice for my kitchen cabinets because i would have done something like that but at that point the builder already had everything so we got the white but the white kitchen uh, i've heard is going out right there was this big article of like i just got this huge white kitchen in. white kitchen with white you know quartz and it's beautiful and it's clean but uh, that that apparently is going out. So there you have it. White, to me. <laughs> white kitchens are out. Sean buys a new house, and white kitchens. Whatever are... I buy, it goes out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Number six, uh, next level playground. Speaking of connecting with nature, 2020 has taken our cabin fever to record level. Experts say enhanced outdoor spaces will continue to trend in the new year. Yes, uh, big playground. You're the that, expert on this. Next, yeah, playgrounds. Yeah. yeah. So one of the things that we told our daughter we would do when we moved was buy her a playground. How old is she? She's turning six in two days. Two days. Two days. I can't believe she's six. Happy birthday, amazing, Brooke. Right? I remember holding her. Yeah, she, she was, was like just this big. big. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Six years old. Time flies. And um, yes, yeah, so we are talking playgrounds. And you know what? Like something like that is super expensive. We're talking 10 grand, 15 grand for this kind of stuff. Um, I'm looking, you know. 2500 bucks, you know, and below, please keep it down, uh, if that, you know. And I want to have a fun thing for her, but there's only so much yard you can take up with a playground. To create the ultimate kids club, homeowners are even going beyond store-bought swing sets and adding zip lines, adventure courses, and climbing walls. Sean, please do not DIY a zip line. If yeah. you're going to do that, get a professional to do that. No, what we're doing is the American Ninja Warrior in our backyard. Yeah. <laughs> so like we're going to have like zip have, like, lines and like plastic you know, boxes, <laughs> like yeah, moving over. boxes everywhere. <laughs> Number seven, outdoor kitchens. I'm not sure how many outdoor kitchens we'll find in the, uh, the Mideast, Mid-Atlantic area with our climate. I absolutely love the concept. There was a house um, that I sold in Alexandria or on Bernard Avenue yeah. that had an outdoor kitchen. Simply sensational. Oh, it was um, awesome. And if there's the opportunity, and certainly at the right price bracket, I think we're going to start to see more outdoor kitchens. Yeah, not only kitchens, but um, what I'm starting to see, and, and I saw this the other day when I was uh, touring a new homes community out in Fairfax, was a deck, not with you know a fire pit or something like that. It was a deck with a wall on one side, and in that wall was a gas fireplace. So outside, but kind of closed in slightly. Is that on our list? I think I saw that on oh. your Instagram story. I put it on my Instagram, and maybe we'll put it up here. It's it was really cool, and it got me thinking. That's what I'm doing. You know, I want a fire pit too. I want everything. You know, but having that area that you can sit outside on your deck with a little bit of seclusion, but having uh, a fireplace out there sick multi-season spaces that feature fireplaces fire pits patio deck areas or screened in porches that can be um, used year-round i have a vip client that is looking for a house with uh screened in porches out in um ashburn area yeah, screened in porches are huge right now i had a, a neighbor across the street create this awesome outdoor um screened in porch they had a wood, um, a wood burning, stone fireplace, and a TV above it, and it was you know completely outside, screened in. But watch football games out there. It was awesome. It was great. Yeah. Number eight, smart bathroom innovations. So things like um, LED lights, um, those smart um, bathroom mirrors where you can just tap on it, things of this nature. Now, during the you know what? I almost went to Home Depot and just replaced my vanity. I didn't do it, but I was thinking about replacing it with one of these really cool because I don't, I don't really like the lighting in my bathroom. It's very, very yellow, very orange. So I was thinking about doing this, and 
I was talking to a few people, and I, I currently rent my spot simply because the if I were to buy this, this would be like seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Like I can't, I'm not gonna buy a condo right now. Um, but people are saying, oh, well, you rent it, then that that's a waste of money. Like, no, it's not. Not to me, not to the guy that looks in the mirror every single day that's going to enjoy it. So I think smart bathroom innovations are going to be huge in the next couple of years. Yeah, I was actually looking at them. And, and if you ever go to these hotels and they have these mirrors that have, you know, the LED lights built into it, it just makes, honestly, it makes you look amazing, right? It's yeah. like, oh, wow. Or it makes you look awful because you can see every blemish in your face. That too. But but uh, I was looking at that as well. Um, you know, you have to wire them in. So you're going to have to hire an electrician to run some wire into that area. Um, they also have the smart, you know, speakers that are built into some of these things. Like there was a, uh, a fan, a bathroom fan with a, with a Bluetooth speaker in it or the things in your showers, right? They have the Bluetooth speakers built in. So what um, about temperature control for your bathroom floors, heated floors? Yeah. Very cool idea. Uh, we had some heated floors. We had uh, in our old house, we had our whole sunroom that was heated and I turned that thing on and I got the electric bill and I quickly turned it off Really? <laughs> because it made Wait, that thing the skyrocket. sunroom floors. Do you remember the sunroom in the I house? I do. It was, it was massive. It was massive, right? Yeah. So it was a huge sun and that whole thing had he, what was he, like he, a ballpark of like the surplus of? I extra. mean, I want to say up three hundred. Up three hundred. Up three hundred. That wow, month. it was crazy. Yep. So wow. and we didn't know. You know, we we, I put it on and maybe I had it too high. But the thing is, with heated floors, it takes a while. So you're not going to see an instant heating. It's it's like a, a, you know, it could take a couple hours to get to where you want it. But then you keep it on, and um, I don't know, man. But that's also like two hundred square feet or so. Yeah, it was How, a pretty big. Yeah, uh, it was probably yeah ten by twenty. Yeah. Um, so with the little ones, with the little bathrooms, I think it's an awesome feature because one thing I hate is having cold feet or stepping on a cold tile floor. So yeah, do it. Number eight, retro furniture and color palettes. I am going to disagree on this one. The article from Realtor.com says that the um, quarantine brought serious waves of nostalgia and people seeking comfort from the from the past. First of all, if you're ordering any sort of furniture, it probably still hasn't arrived yet. Second yeah, of all, true. if you're going to be ordering furniture, I'd, I'd probably go modern rather than retro, but maybe that's just uh, you know my stylistic So taste. what would be the difference between retro and modern? I guess retro is older, kind of pulling the old new. And the, okay, so one thing I'll say about that is uh, I think I, I disagree with this. I don't think people are going retro um, right now. I personally just sold my house, which is a mid-century modern. And that was kind of like my retro phase, uh, which was very cool. And maybe it's just me because I got tired of it and wanted something more of like the, not necessarily pottery barn, barn feel, but kind of that tier, right? Um, so I went away from the mid-century modern kind of pulling that retro furniture. Um, it, the reason is a lot of that furniture isn't very comfortable. No, it's, it's horrible. It's not. It's like, it looks cool for a little while and then you're like man i just want a comfy couch just you want know? to sit down just, and not have to like yeah and you, do you ever go into these houses where you you, you like it looks amazing and you sit in and you're like this sucks you know this is bad like i don't or you go into the houses where you can clearly see that no one's ever sat in that room because it's just a showcase what's the sense of living you in feel that? bad even sitting there yeah i want to live in my spaces so um, one thing that I may agree with um, is the the color palettes. Yeah. Pick a bold color, one wall, smaller bathroom, and you know paint it um, retro. So I think we are seeing, you know, wallpaper is coming back. Oh, I've yeah. seen more and more wallpaper. You know, you can make the argument that wallpaper is retro. You know, wallpaper is 80s and 90s. I guess 90s is retro now. So I I do think you know the one accent wall. You know, don't go painting every single wall purple, but uh, you know, I could see the one accent wall coming back. I agree with you. And I think that where uh, these strong colors are good is like, like your bathrooms, right? So we bought this house and it was painted the way the builder painted it, right? So neutral color made basically two colors throughout the whole house. But now that we're in there, all right, we want to start personalizing things. Definitely like that bathroom on the main level um, because it just feels stale. It just feels like, uh, you know, you don't really want care. So we're looking at wallpapers. Um, there's there's some a lot of different cool options right now. And 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 if speaking of bringing the raton in, would be your natural wallpapers. Like, do you ever see the things that look like, <laughs> sorry, uh, that look like um, like straw or things like sure. that? Sure. Yeah. Sure. So it's a cool feel. And you know what? Like, 
Look at this right here, right? Yeah. Look at that wallpaper. I think it's awesome, honestly. I think I think it's a cool textured feel. I mean, see how this looks? Yeah. This is what I'm talking about, but in like this is flat, but the real the real stuff of that, right? So would you say I'm ahead of the trend? Matt is always ahead of the trends. I mean, come on, look at this suit. Snappy. Good. <laughs> Number 10 is cozy layered vibes. Um this means Warm colors and natural wood in lieu of cool grays and blues. Now, Sean, usually we paint our our new listings, our new houses, our new condos in um, you know, the gray, the Sherwin Williams gray. What is that gray gray called again? It's called passive gray. Passive gray. Yeah, it's a really um, good gray. Same as agreeable gray. Now there is I feel like there is some blue in there. I feel mm -hmm. like, you know, you could there's a hint of blue in there. This is saying that warmer colors are, you know, we're going to see more warmer colors. People want to, you know, feel at ease more than ever. And, you know, don't be afraid to throw some more throw pillows on the couch and more blankets, more of a, a layered, more of a textured vibe. There's a couple yeah. rug. How many, They have a rug on top of a rug. It, and then a throw. Am I... On top of a, so like yeah. how many how many throw pillows? Well, do we this need? is this is again like that pottery barn look. That reminds me of like you know that kind of style. Um, I would say that I don't think the painting trend is going that way. I mean, especially to sell something, you want to tone it down, right? But when you're living in your house and you want to make it your own, you're gonna layer things. I can see that as all right. You have your hardwood floors, then you have a throw rug over that, and then kind of another smaller throw rug over that. It it can look cool. Uh, it gives it a warm feeling, a cozy feeling. Um, whereas, and that's the thing, you know, when we, when we sell houses, not, we, we do want to make it feel, um, clean, right. And that's why we use the grays, but then we stage it and staging it warms it up. Right. So I think this trend is, yeah, I could see it happening. Um, you know, it, it gives it cozy feeling. The article from realtor.com says instead of stark white minimalism, expect to see more color and more personality. So, you know, white is is kind of boring. You know, I when people sell condos, the houses, it's white. It's it kind of has the sterile vibe to it, which is why we suggest um, you know, gray, which is a little uh, a little friendlier. You know, there's a, a real estate brokerage property collective. Um, they do a lot of work in in Reston, Fairfax County, and and Arlington, and and they've put together some amazing interior decor packages where they're not going straight white they're going uh, they're towing the line a little bit but the the line is going towards them they're if you want to say out in front of the trends yeah. they know what's hot and, awesome. and they're doing a good job of of going that extra mile not being boring and do you know doing something what the market wants yeah and honestly when i went out to this new homes uh place out in fairfax they had a lot of different colors in their models and and they were layering things and using wallpapers and all that stuff so when you go through that their one particular model was amazing and um the tones were like browns they, they actually had some dark browns in there with dark brown wallpapers you know not overtaking the space but uh, really giving it a good flair uh, and warmed it up a lot. So, yeah, I, I can see this happening, and I think it's a good trend. Cool. Well, I mm -hmm. think we're still going to recommend our clients paint gray for now. Absolutely. Um, until something changes. Well, guys, there you have it, the top 10 design trends. As we look back, uh, you know, for next year, when we look back a year from now, I wonder how accurate these are going to be. Mm. Like, are we going to look back and say, I can't believe – that someone would want a playground. Yeah. No, I think people are going to want a playground. I think they'll still want a playground. Um, yeah, I wonder, you know, because we have, we have no idea what's going to happen this year. And hopefully things get better for us. That's a good color right there. I had that color yeah. in my basement. That's it's uh, like a teal, a dark teal. Yeah, that's a good accent wall color. Good accent wall color, yeah. Cool, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you uh, um, agree, disagree, would love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. And for Sean and myself, hope you have an awesome holiday and a safe new year. Until next time, we'll see you then. Take care.